launch after launch, symbol after symbol. The American aircraft carrier Enterprise has been turned into a conveyor belt of warplanes as NATO pressure continues. The signs are everyone is on a high state of alert with round-the-clock exercise to fine-tune the preparations. The Americans have already spoken of the need to maintain NATO's credibility over Kosovo. Commanders here, though, say they're waiting for the political go-ahead to act. The air crews are unlikely to go in before the diplomatic talks in London next week. And NATO already knows that tackling the threat of the Serbs may also turn it into an unwilling tool of the KLA separatists. Namibia's northern border with Angola, one of the many front lines in the unending destructive conflict between South Africa and its black neighbours. A detachment of No. 10 Armours Division of the South African Defence Force moves out from its base at Oshakati, 20 miles inside the border, for its regular dust to dawn patrol in search of insurgents belonging to SWAPO, the South West Africa People's Organisation. Curfew breakers are discouraged by displays of South African firepower. Three-man reconnaissance units like these, training for deep penetration raids into Angola, in which they might kill 20 Swapo men in a single attack, have helped turn the war, perhaps irreversibly, in South Africa's favour. For the last two years, Lata Filipovic has kept a powerful record of how it feels to live in the besieged city of Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia. I now realise that I'm living through a war. I'm witnessing an ugly, disgusting war. I and thousands of other children in this town that is being destroyed. The gunfire was getting worse. We ran down to our cellar. Outside, the battle raged. We listened to the pounding shells, the shooting, the thundering noise overhead. We even heard planes. At one moment, I realized that this awful cellar was the only place that could save our lives. It even started to look warm and nice. 